Now, let's uh, take a look at uh, the water crisis in the country for one and the latest, uh, a region that has been uh, perennially experiencing shortages and ailing infrastructure. Nelson Mandela Bay Mayor Ngaba Banga urging President Saro Ramaphosa to declare the metro uh, disaster area. Dam levels, they continue to decline and they're now just above 12 percent. We're going to look at uh, this area. And other areas in the Gauteng region, including Hammerskral, look at the infrastructure that's been impacting on hospitals. Remember, we've been speaking about that. Uh, we'll also talk about dam levels and also talk about the Lesotho Highlands project, see how that is uh, aiding. Professor Anthony Turton is an affiliated professor in the Centre for Environmental Management at the University of the Free State. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Perhaps let's start with the Nelson Mandela Bay drought. Um, just how bad is the situation becoming and why is it taking so long to declare the area a, a, dis, a, a disaster area or a crisis area? Well, the dec good evening to you and the listeners. Um, the declaration of a disaster area is basically a political uh, decision that has to be made, not a technical one. It's obviously fed by technical facts, but it's uh, essentially a, a political decision that needs to be made. The uh, Nelson Mandela Bay area has been uh, lurching towards a crisis now for some years. When Cape Town had its uh, day zero crisis, it was already forecast then that Nelson Mandela Bay would have exactly the same type of crisis in the not too distant future. And it's not only drought related, it really comes down more to the fact that um, the e economic growth and, and population expansion has simply outstripped the available water supply. And uh, the, there has not been adequate uh, 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 long-term planning to, to meet that demand, as simple as that. Mm, and I know the last time you and I spoke about this issue, as you say, it's more of a political decision. There were even suggestions on the reasons behind being the behind the way it is because South Africa needs a water agency that will help. But uh, as you say, the area has been on day zero for a long time. So what can be done to circumvent just having this political declaration? Well, you must appreciate that in the 1960s, a plan was implemented to take water from the Kharib Dam uh, into the Port Elizabeth area through a very sophisticated interbasin transfer. Uh, the concept of that uh, planning actually uh, happened in 1850 about. So from plus minus 1850 to plus minus 1960, more than 100 years, that's how long that concept took to take root and become reality. So these are complicated things that take a long lead time. Uh, we are talking at least a decade, uh, sometimes more than a decade's worth of planning, thinking, uh, uh, you know, mobilizing funds, doing the designs, et cetera, et cetera. It's not just a simple uh, question of, uh, of clicking your fingers and making it go away overnight. But uh, the Kharib Dam is, uh, is certainly uh, full. I was there just uh, a few weeks ago, it's overflowing. And uh, the, the interbasin transfer from the Kharib to the, uh, the, the so-called Orange Fish uh, Sunday's interbasin transfer scheme is, uh, it has been planned for a long time, has been functioning for a long time. So uh, if the infrastructure is broken, well, then, then of course, uh, the water can't get to the end destination. But the major infrastructure has been in place for decades now. Mm. So I want to take that situation and move it to Gauteng, where, for instance, uh, water shedding has pretty much crippled hospitals, namely uh, in the Johannesburg region. Yes, it affects Gauteng, but uh, the city's under budgeting has set to be part of the problem for the crumbling infrastructure and uh, the lack of specialized technical resources. Would you agree with this assessment or is it much bigger a matrix than we're seeing? Well, once again, uh, you know, with engineering supply, with, uh, with engineering design, one builds in a buffer capacity. And uh, um, a couple of years ago, at least half a decade ago, uh, it was very well, well known that uh, Johannesburg had lost its buffering capacity. And in fact, some parts of Johannesburg were down to less than 24 hours worth of buffering capacity. Buffering capacity is the capacity of water stored in the system uh, that's a, that, that can uh, take you through a short-term shock. So I was doing some work for clients in the Midrand area about four or five years ago, and uh, there it was very, very well known then that uh, Johannesburg had lost its buffering capacity. Now this uh, this is a, is a long-term engineering intervention, 
uh, you don't just build buffering capacity overnight. And, and, and really what it comes down to is that the demand for water has simply outstripped supply uh, because of, uh, of the migration of people, mobilization of people. Uh, the economy hasn't significantly grown, so it's not really economic demand for water, but it's uh, essentially uh, people settling uh, you know, in permanent positions and, uh, and, and using water, as simple as that. Um, in the case of Gauteng, it, uh, it's the only uh, part of the world that I'm aware of that's not located on a river, a, a lake, or a waterfront. It's located on a continental watershed divide. So this pipe behind me that you see in this uh, image now, this is one of the pipes from the Lesotho Highlands Water Project. I'll just step away and show you the size of it. That's me standing inside the pipe there. So you see that's, uh, that's one of the pipes that comes through the mountains from Lesotho. And uh, yeah, we're talking about big bits of engineering to get that pipe 80 or 90 kilometers long dead straight through a mountain is no mean achievement. It takes uh, uh, considerable planning and many years worth of execution. Mm. Okay, so then perhaps while you've mentioned that, let's talk a little bit more about the trans caledon Tunnel. Um, and the authority, that's just raised over 15 billion rand in the capital market. So how is this going to benefit uh, Gauteng, for instance, as a region? I mean, if you look at what is needed, something in the region of 2 billion rand to uh, fix water and uh, the sewage pipes, that network... How is this going to alleviate that problem if there's not being a proper diagnosis, so to speak, of what should be priority? Well, the, the strategic planning is what it's all about, you know, because the water comes in, it's got to come in from a source, and then you've got to take your, your, your water that's been used now and polluted uh, back to a, wa a wastewater treatment plant and then reticulate it back into the system. So this pipe now behind me, this comes from the Lesotho Highlands, so that water from the from the mountain flows through the, the mountain uh, 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 range that comes into a river, the Ash River outfall flows eventually into the Wild Dam, then gets pumped uphill into uh, the Gauteng area, and then one toilet flush at a time, this very same water gets uh, moved over the continental watershed divide out of the Orange River Basin into the Limpopo River Basin, where it then cascades down the, uh, the, the Limpopo Basin from the headwaters of the Victoria area. Uh, all the way down to Mozambique eventually. So basically, we move water around uh, uh, one toilet flush at a time. And um, no, we, that's, that's very, very significant and very complex engineering that we've done. Uh, we've unfortunately lost a significant amount of our engineering capacity over time. And uh, we're starting to feel it now because in terms of long-term planning, uh, we, uh, we've lost that, uh, that ability. And... Uh, uh, we've also ha ha tended, to, tended to have cascaded the responsibility for planning from national government down to local municipality level, where they simply don't have the skills to do this long-term mm. planning. So, you know, essentially we're sitting with a crisis now of, uh, of, uh, of, of planning, and uh, it's going to take at least, a, at least a, a decade or so to actually work our way out of this crisis. Okay, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us, uh, Professor Anthony Turchin. He is uh, with the Centre for Environment uh, Management.